our live. Hey guys, Danielle Salty Cooker here, and cameraman as always is my husband Joe. Hello, hello. We are waiting for people to join. So I will wait to do my spiel. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to start to prep a little bit. We are going on, you can tell, a little bit earlier today. Um, just with scheduling and everything, uh, 6 p.m. worked a little bit better. But next week, we'll probably be closer to that 7 p.m. mark like we normally are. So um, we are making German chocolate cake. This is going to be, I make everything gluten-free and dairy-free. You're welcome to make it full gluten, full dairy. And as people are joining here, I'm going to go ahead and just start to prep. And Joe's going to go ahead and just cue me in once we get some people on here and we'll get baking. See my half a friend smoking what just joined. What's up, buddy? He already knows the drill. But for the rest of you who are joining, I'm Joe. I am behind the camera. And if you guys have any questions, you can throw them in the comment box. I will go ahead and relay them to Danielle. Yeah, so we're just getting back in the swing of things. Um, just got back from New Orleans. Uh, went to the Fresh Air Retreat, which was absolutely so informative that I'm still just kind of like, okay, where do I start? <laughs> Um, we do have a really cool new feature that is going to be on Instagram here. I have installed this little app thing that if you comment below and just type in recipe, you'll automatically receive a direct message from me that will take you to the website that will have the full um, German chocolate cake recipe. And it's going to take you right to that page so then you don't have to, you know, mess around or scroll on this or anything like that it makes it a lot easier so again just type in recipe in the comments below and you'll get this recipe automatically emailed to you um, i did shoot some new pictures and stuff like that for um, the recipe so the um, blog post will be a lot prettier here in the next few days so but yeah lots of things going on um yeah so getting back from new orleans there was just so much information and it was so cool to meet all of these people that are in the same field because a lot of us you know food bloggers content creators we're doing all this in our in our house so we don't really go out and socialize as much as um you know if you're working kind of a job that you're going and you're driving to and doing all that so it was really cool to go meet people in person and just to see people like like what what are they doing in their field it's just it was really unique um and yeah as you can tell my mind is still spinning <laughs> with that the cookbook and um i did let you guys know that poor joey is um not feeling too hot with his neck he's actually going to be getting surgery here in a few weeks um so we will be off of lives probably for a week or two until um possibly my assistant will start filming me so then you guys can meet carol maybe we'll get a neck brace mount for the camera and just walk around with that yeah just have the neck brace and then just have it like here <laughs> almost like a selfie stick yeah. attached to your neck brace <laughs> <laughs> patent pending don't take that yeah. i see a few people commenting recipe in the comments right now so hopefully that's all working let us know if... um it's not going to work until i post this it's got to okay. be posted and then it's going to feed through but i will go through there and send you guys the recipe so you can definitely go ahead and comment in there and let's get cooking so um german one chocolate. more time yeah sorry yeah we are making german chocolate cake this is you know personally like my favorite chocolate cake the frosting alone i could just devour but this recipe, it's really easy to make. And I'm going to show you a few different modifications to make it even easier. Again, I make everything gluten-free, dairy-free. You can make it full gluten, full dairy. So let's get going. We're going to start with two cups of sugar. And this is a great recipe for Mother's Day. Um, you know, all types of moms, whether caregiver, dog mom, mom mom, I mean anything. This is going to be a great recipe that that they will love. Okay, so where am I at? At that, I need to add what did you just two add? Two eggs. 
two cups of sugar. We need to add two eggs. So I printed this off and normally I write it up separate and it's like running into that. So let me do this. I looked it up. I was like, how can it have been two years since I've made this recipe? It's insane. Because you hate us. <laughs> no, because I know that I'm going to be the one eating it all. This used to be my, this in Black Forest cake used to be my cake for my birthday my mom would always make and yeah I'd eat it so it's dangerous all right <laughs> let me grab a big old whisk and I'm still sticking with stretchy pants I didn't even put on jeans today I was like I can't believe I'm doing this but um I always try to dress up a little bit on here but after all that amazing food in New Orleans yeah it's stretchy pants for like two weeks <laughs> Now, normally I would use a mixer for this, but because of our setup here, I'm just gonna do a hand whisk on everything. Now let's, we're adding in all of our liquids really at first. So we have, should be two teaspoons, two teaspoons of vanilla extract. We're gonna do, should be half a cup of vegetable oil. And I'm really excited. I don't think it's next week. I think it's going to be the week after, just in time for Memorial Day. Um, we are going to shoot inside and outside, um, a lot of outside on the smoker. We're going to do a smoked pulled pork butt. And I'm going to show you different ways to like make tacos or different ways to use the pork. Okay, let's see. Yeah, how many smoked? Cold pork butts are you making? Four. Four. Because we, because yeah, I mean, you don't want to sit on here for 10 hours with me. I don't have that much to say. I barely have enough to say for half an hour. But we are going to prep one. We're going to have one um, midpoint and we're going to have one that we can shred. And I'm going to do one just to make sure that I have all my timing correctly. Five ounces of Greek yogurt. You could do Greek yogurt, sour cream. If you're in a bind and you don't want to use either of those, you could do a banana. That's a really good substitute. So five ounces. And I do have on the website, and if I don't right now, I'll make sure that it gets on there, different substitutes for like sour cream, Greek yogurt, stuff like that. Okay, so we have our vanilla, we have our eggs. That is this, oh, did I add in the eggs? Yeah, that's why it's yellow. And we're just going to mix this up. Again, if you have a hand mixer, stand mixer, that's gonna work way better. And if you guys have any questions, just message Joe on there and he can go ahead and ask me. Yeah, we've got a lot of new people rolling in. You might wanna repeat what you're making. We are making German chocolate cake just in time for Mother's Day. So this is a really easy recipe and ideally it's made in advance too. So it makes it even better. So then the day you can spend spending time with the mother in your life. And yeah, it's a, and I mean, either way, it's a good, good uh, dessert any time of the day, really. <laughs> okay, let's see. I need kosher salt. We're going to do, I'm trying to make sure I don't get too distracted and screw this up again. I realized one of the last lives that I made, I forgot to add like a cup of flour in or something. So that's why I'm a little bit more focused this time. <laughs> okay, one teaspoon kosher salt. Dialed in, guys. I'm dialed in. I'm really not. I need more caffeine. I'm trying to cut back on caffeine and I feel like it's doing the exact opposite for me. One cup of cocoa. Now, when it comes to anything chocolate, the better quality chocolate you use, the richer it's going to be. So if you want a really rich chocolate cake, get you some good cocoa. Two cups of flour. If you're doing a gluten-free flour like I am, we are using a one-to-one -one gluten-free flour. I like Cup for Cup, Bob's Red Mill. Those are my two go-to. Okay. 
and we need baking soda, one and a half teaspoons. I always double check just to make sure this teaspoon and teaspoon is the right one. <laughs> I did that a couple times where I swore it was a teaspoon, but it was half a tablespoon, and that did not turn out well. <laughs> half a t one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. and espresso powder. So a lot of people ask if they need to add espresso powder in this. No, but espresso powder will help um, intensify the flavor of the chocolate. So personally, I recommend it. Do you really taste the, or the um, coffee? No. I mean, you may get a hint of it, but not very much. But if you're not a fan, you don't have espresso powder, you don't want to use espresso powder, just omit it. No big deal. Now we're going to mix this, and then lastly, I have a cup of fresh brewed coffee, and that's the next one that I get a lot on for chocolate cakes, is do I have to use the fresh brewed coffee, or can I use um, decaf, or does it have to be full caffeine? Coffee's coffee, you can use whichever one you prefer, whether you want to do decaf or... Um, you know, full caffeinated coffee, that doesn't really matter. Let's set that aside here. Someone just asked if they could use regular coffee instead of espresso powder. Um, like instant coffee? So if it was instant coffee, you won't need to because we're going to add in, we're going to add in a cup of fresh brewed coffee. Add in there. So if it's coffee powder, you wouldn't need to do that. Um, you know, I haven't tried it. I wouldn't, I haven't tried it. I would think that the coffee, the fresh brewed coffee would be enough though. Okay, we just mix this until it's just incorporated. And that's another thing when you're baking, you wanna make sure like once you get your flour in there, Everything is just mixed until incorporated up to that point. Like when you're mixing eggs with sugar, typically you want to beat the crap out of it until it's nice and fluffy to really break that down, get it well incorporated. But this step is always the step that um, at least I used to do it all the time, just over mix. If you over mix, your cake's going to go flat. Sometimes it can get a little bit stodgy. Joe always makes fun of me when I say stodgy. <laughs> and I just sort of saying it after watching um, the British Bake Off. I was just like, oh, such a good word, though, because it makes so much sense. Okay, so with this, you could make, um, you can do two 8-inch pans, greased, floured. You could do um, three, what is it, three 6-inch pans. They're just going to be a little bit thinner. Or you could even make cupcakes with this. This is a kind of like a all purpose style chocolate cake. Now we're just going to split this up. We have the oven heating to 350. And then we're going to start the frosting. And the frosting also needs to be made in advance because it needs to chill. Sure, I get all that in there. I'm talking about a have lot to get today. All of that in there? You could leave some in. <laughs> I know it's got raw eggs. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, our friend, old roommate, he used to, if he saw that I was making anything chocolate, like he's a true chocoholic, he would get mad if I put it in the dishwasher before he could get a hold of it so he could lick the bowl clean. Like, man, now that is a true chocoholic. All right, we're just going to do a little bit of that. Throw it in the oven for 350. And let's go ahead. I'm just going to do a quick little move around here with stuff. And then we're going to get started on the frosting. Evan C. asked, can I put 
maple syrup in it for some other flavor? You could. Um, I don't know how maple syrup would go with it. If you added a banana instead of sour cream, um, let's see, a banana instead of sour cream, you get a little bit of like that peanut butter, or peanut butter, I'm, I need caffeine, um, a little bit of the peanut butter, <laughs> damn it. Take three, take three. <laughs> Start over. Chocolate banana flavor, like the chocolate banana bread, which would go really well. As you can tell, I'm a peanut butter fan. <laughs> All right, come on over here. We're going to start the frosting. Or you could, let's see, chalk. What goes well with chocolate? Chocolate. Chocolate. Yeah, chocolate, coconut. I mean, you could add some coconut flavoring in there. That would be a really good combo. We're already, we're already going to put chocolate in, I'm sorry, <laughs> coconut in the frosting. I'm falling apart. Yeah, so for everybody who actually needs the recipe here, you can just comment <laughs> recipe. She'll send it to you. <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> I'm calling it a day. I'm good. <laughs> All right, let me grab the recipe here. <laughs> I'm a hot mess. Okay, so now we're going to go to the German chocolate frosting, the best part of this whole cake. We start off, now I like to start with the pan that it's not on, and then we're going to add the ingredients in, and then slowly raise the heat up because we are putting eggs into this. So it's just going to slowly temper the eggs versus the, running the risk of them becoming scrambled. So we have half a cup of butter. Let's see. One cup of brown sugar. I need a thing. And we're packing the brown sugar too. Okay, one teaspoon of vanilla. One cup of evaporated milk. I had this question the other day, so this is my go-to for evaporated milk. I believe this brand also came out with a oat version of evaporated milk. I know they did for sweet and condensed, but I'm not positive on this one. Um, my nails are too long. I got it. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Look at you cooking in the kitchen. I did it. You did it all by yourself. And we're doing one cup of the milk. And now we're going to just Turn this on low. We have our three egg yolks. And this is where I get the most, or this is the most common question, is how do you know that the frosting is done and it can go in the air, airtight container and go in the fridge? So I'm gonna show you guys the steps of this because I do need to switch one of the wording parts of saying that it thickens because I'm, I'll now show you guys. It doesn't technically thicken, thicken, but it gets um, a little bit more rich in color, and I'll show you guys. So we're adding those eggs. We are going to hurry and whisk, 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 because we don't want scrambled eggs. And this is slowly going to come up in temperature, and then we can crank up the heat some. So one of the last times I made this, or maybe it was the last time that I made it, I was like, why would they call it German chocolate cake if it's not German? Because we were living in Florida, it was the last time I made it, and two of my girlfriends over who are from Germany, just happen to be from Germany, <laughs> and I'm making this, and they're like, yeah, this isn't a German recipe. So. Somebody on Instagram sent me a message and said it was some guy's name, whatever the first name was, and his last name was German, and he created this recipe. I was like, oh, that makes so much more sense. That's just confusing. Yeah, I agree. 
They should have just called it like Tom's cake. <laughs> that would be much more clear. Yeah, <laughs> I thought so. Evan C. asked, Joe, do you cook? Um, I mean, I cook a few things like scrambled eggs and grilled cheese. And I warm up tomato soup out of a can. <laughs> and yeah, John makes the best grilled cheese. <laughs> so I never had a grilled cheese until Joe and I started dating when I was 16. And I think it was like 17 or 18. And I caught a cold. And we were living together at that time. And he's like, all right, I'll make you a grilled cheese and tomato soup. I'm like, why would I want grilled cheese and tomato soup? Yeah, that sounds disgusting. Never had it as a kid. So that was just not, not something my mom made. And had it, and it was like, oh, my God, what a killer combo. Do people know about this? <laughs> Is this a hidden secret that, that you and your mom came up with? Yeah, no, everybody had it. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew it was a thing? Yeah, so very limited on the cooking for Joe. He cook used a, to make a, few a things. really good burger. Yeah, I mean, I could still do it, you know. I just don't. You better prove it. Nah. Yeah. Good. I think you should try it. I think it'll hurt my neck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> hurt my neck. You'll be fine. Evan said, Campbell's soup is horrible. Make it from scratch. <laughs> I don't know. Their tomato soup is still probably one of my favorites. So. Oh, Evan, you'll like this one. <laughs> so I'm just starting to cook. We're living in northern Michigan. I mean, this is a long time ago young 20s just starting to really learn how to cook and i saw somebody on the food network probably Anna Gartner, tyler florence making seafood chowder i was like oh i'm gonna try making clam chowder from scratch you know we, joe and i always ate you know campbell's soup clam chowder and loved it i'm like oh i'm gonna make it from scratch it's gonna be amazing i spent all day making this stupid chowder that <laughs> he takes one bite and he's like yeah, I like Campbell's more. <laughs> it's like, I'm never making this again. I've never made it again since. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't really recall you ever making it again. No, <laughs> that was scarring. <laughs> I was like, it was stupid soup. <laughs> but it is, as a whole, yeah, typically everything's better from scratch. I think I redeemed myself, though. I made a crab bisque for Thanksgiving one year, and Joe's sister sat down with the pot and ate the entire thing herself. Well, yeah, you've uh, redeemed yourself more than that since then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought it was still good. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're looking for. It's starting to come to a boil, and it's on low right now. Whoop. It's on low right now. So you're seeing that it's pulling away from the sides. It's coming to a boil. It looks like it's a little bit thicker. So we're getting there. And it's a, now is it caramel or caramel? Eh, whatever you want to call it. I'm, I'm done arguing with you about it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to say a caramel in color. Caramel just sounds fancy. It's like the bougie way to say it. Oh, then I'm definitely saying it that way. Caramel. <laughs> caramel. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, I do have something exciting that we're going to be doing starting tomorrow morning with you guys. I hope that everyone is interested, participates. Um, I had did a poll the other day on... Would you guys want to go on vacation with me? If Joe and I were to set up a vacation, we set up an entire itinerary, say we go to Italy and we're going to do, you know, six nights, seven nights um, and go check out some different sites and foods. Is that something that you guys would pay to go to? So I'm going to post tomorrow morning a link to click on and then just fill out everything on there and we may go on vacation together. And I really want to do it for my 40th birthday. I think that would be fun is for us to celebrate, you know, celebrate together. And first time doing this, I think that would be even cooler. So, and you guys can actually see Joe and meet Joe in person <laughs> since he is behind the camera. Although um, Jordan over at Jay-Z Eats asked or said it would be a lot of fun if you were cooking on camera versus me. We did a switch up like you had brought up. Yeah. Okay, so if you want to come look like at this. failures, I'm in. You can see 
I guess it's just the look of it to me. You can see how it's kind of thicker, it's bubbling, that moisture is really getting out of there, everything's incorporated together. Go ahead and turn off the heat and we're going to add two cups of chopped pecans, pecans, however you want to say that one too. Got all the confusing words today. And one cup of coconut flakes. Again, the recipe will be posted. You can comment below and just say or comment recipe and the recipe I will send it directly to you. Now we're going to mix this together. We did get one yes in the comments saying yes, they would love to join. And another asked, when is your birthday? Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, I think this would be so much fun. One of the girls um, from the Fresh Air Retreat, she did this with, I think she seemed like she did it like three, four times and said everybody had a blast and it was amazing. Um, so my birthday is December 1st, but because Joe's busy season is the fourth quarter, my busy season for cooking is a fourth quarter. We are thinking like September, October, um, so we can get in some, you know, maybe some fall weather, maybe in Italy or I don't know, somewhere fun. So um, I'm just going to set this aside. Now you would pour this into an airtight container, place it in the fridge and let it set up. Uh, but yes, and then if this goes well, then it would be amazing to do this again, you know. Like she said, she's done it a few different times, and even the people that they went together on this trip, they're still getting, like, they created a Facebook group, and they get together, like, once a year. It just sounds like a lot of fun. I think, I think we would have a good time. Okay, so last step is the chocolate buttercream frosting. I am going to put everything in this mix mixer. Um, let's see. I just need to grab a couple things. So we have a comment. One said, uh, if we can't go to Italy, can we meet down in the States? We'd love to meet you guys. Something maybe a little more affordable. So that's always an option, right? Yes, definitely. So there's a lot of different itineraries that, you know, it's through a, um, kind of like a travel agency that I spoke to him today. And it sounds like what you would do is, and I went through the questionnaire today and I filled out my side and it's going to be the exact same thing that you guys fill out in the morning. Um, it's going to ask you, what would you pay? Where would you like to go? Um, time of year that you would like to go. And we're just going to start, and you can pick several different places. You can pick several different months and you can put in like the range, what you would spend on a vacation and then how many days. And then we just kind of narrow down the itinerary from there. And even let's say, you know, half the people want to do something in the States and the other half the people want to go out of the country, then that's just two different trips. So yeah, I think I'm excited. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Too oh, much fun. Too much fun. Yeah. And you guys should see Joey on vacation. He needs to be occupied. So he likes to go, go, go. I need one more stick Yeah, vacation of isn't enough. We've got to go zip lining or skydiving. No, or like, no, no. See, know, too far. Cliff jumping, nope. something. I'm just going to go eat at the restaurant and I'll meet you afterwards. Hence why <laughs> I'm getting surgery on my neck. <laughs> <laughs> go a little too hard at times. <laughs> just a little. Uh, Evan C. said, sorry, missed when your birthday is. It's December 1st. December but, 1st. But the trip scheduling is going to be based on answers of the questionnaire. So don't worry about the actual date there other than, you know, to tell Danielle happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, if you just fill out the questionnaire because we are going to go ahead of time. Um, most likely. So, yeah, just fill that out. Let me know what works best for you guys so then we can coordinate something and get together and do vacation and yeah we'd love to do like cooking classes and sightseeing and I mean it sounds like they have some really cool itineraries do you want to tell people what you're putting in there 
So right now we are making the chocolate buttercream frosting. If you wanted to do an easy chocolate frosting, the jarred frosting works great. Um, I like to do the creamy, um, creamy chocolate frosting if you're going to buy it jarred. Otherwise, we are doing a homemade version of chocolate buttercream. And this makes quite a bit, so sometimes you'll have a little bit left over. Oh, I lost count. We'll start with that. So we have that. We need a cup of cocoa, which I pulled out somewhere here. Smoking what says I'll be your fill-in cameraman while you're healing up. Thanks, buddy. See? I need it. I, I could it. use it now. My neck is on fire for some reason, I guess. Holding this big heavy camera. <laughs> holding the phone. Yeah. Well, don't worry, babe. We're <laughs> almost done. At least when I'm done, I got chocolate cake coming. Yeah. So it's totally worth it. You're going to have two. It's not enough. Yeah. Okay, so we have one and a half cups of butter, five cups of powdered sugar, one teaspoon vanilla, half a cup of, I have oat milk that needs to get changed to just milk because um, I actually use Ripple more than anything when it comes to baking. It's a little bit thicker and I found that the consistency and flavor works a little bit better. Having a thicker milk versus like, I mean, oats, good. Almond, I try to stay away from just because it's a little bit too watery. And we could do espresso. I'm not going to do it in this frosting. That in. Looks like started you got the hang slow. of that mixer. Huh? Looks like you got the hang of that mixer. I'm starting thing. to get the hang of it, but you still have to be careful because I jacked this thing up all the way and made a hot mess everywhere and it was red velvet cake so it was not a pretty mess <laughs> once we get this going we're going to go ahead and start to assemble the cake get that butter off there so yeah um, and definitely let me know what you guys think if you have any questions about the questionnaire that I post tomorrow morning. I would love to hear any feedback, thoughts. Evan C. says your tattoo is badass. He threw another curse in there that I won't repeat. But... <laughs> oh. Only because we're live, you know. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that, dear. Look at that. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah i've been debating about getting some hand tattoos actually this chick um i didn't know she, like i didn't know she was in wilmington she started following me the other day and i saw something come up where i was like oh that's wilmington that's right by us and i looked at her work and she does some amazing tattoos so i may have to go check her out and my arm removal is almost completely gone. I'm super excited. It's still a little bit red and swollen, but not too bad. Get one tattoo removed and start adding more. Yep. <laughs> All right, guys, just one second while I get this going. So dairy-free butter is softer than regular butter. So normally... I wouldn't bring a dairy-free butter to room temperature to make frosting. Otherwise, you're going to notice the frosting will melt. So I normally keep it in the fridge and then go right to that to making the buttercream frosting. And then it'll it'll take a little bit longer to whip it together, but overall it's going to hold its shape a lot better. Scrape down the sides one more time, and then we will finish up this frosting. Okay, I do think that we should do an event or something like that too. We're, you know, we're doing this for poor butts. And I was like, man, it'd be really cool to like do a kind of like a 
get together of like, you know, all of us get together and do a cookout or something like that. I don't even know how that would work, <laughs> but it would be a lot of fun. Pretty sure it would work like any other event where you would invite people and then do the event. Yeah. <laughs> but then normally I don't, don't want to complicate do... it. <laughs> but normally I don't want to do all the cooking then. I just want to hang out. <laughs> well, that's why you do pork butts, so they could just be cooked ahead of time. That is true. Pork butts. See, look at that. Everything. I'm a problem solver. You are a problem solver. Look at you. Let's get this here. All right, guys. We are going to do some assembly. I'm just scraping off the side some. When you have powdered sugar and butter, it tends to stick on the sides. We're done with that. And let's get this cake. Oh, so I'm also excited to announce, picked out, and I shouldn't say I picked out, the photographer because I swear it just it worked out so beautifully um, there was this photographer at the fresh air retreat her name's Amanda and her work is beautifully done and several people at the retreat said you don't want to shoot the cookbook yourself you want to have somebody else shoot it for you because it'll be way easier so I was going back and forth with Amanda and she said she's gonna do it so I'm super excited when we get rolling on that, I will send you guys some pictures. Get this. Send you some pictures too as we get shooting. I did test a couple recipes yesterday and today for the cookbook. And we are still looking for names. So if anybody has any names, it needs to be dairy free focused. Where's my big knife? It needs to be dairy-free focus for the name, and we want something catchy and fun. I feel like I have ADHD. I can't find anything. <laughs> it's fun to watch, though. Yeah, just the... <laughs> All right, cut off the top of the cake. Normally with the cake, you're going to have like a harder edge there, so we want to get rid of that. So it is all fluffy. And here's where we're going to do a little bit of layering. Now you could definitely pull out the piping bag and pipe really pretty chocolate around it. It's just Joe and I, so we're not doing that. She's just lying. She's tried it before. It doesn't turn out well. <laughs> She's not a she's not a piper. I don't mind piping cakes. <laughs> yeah, that's but true. cookies You've definitely gotten better. Cookies are my nightmare. <laughs> like um, sugar cookies. Any kind of cookies. So um, Elizabeth, confessions of a baking queen at the retreat and I were talking. I'm like, all right, what do you love filming and what's the worst thing? And Mine has always been pies. I love eating them, but shooting them are, is so hard. And cookies. I just, there's something about cookies. I love them, but I much prefer doing cakes and decorating the cakes and stuff like that. <laughs> All right, so we want a generous layer of that in there. Let me wash my hands. Give me one second to throw my hair back here. Get the behind the scenes shots. Yeah, I have one bang that keeps falling out of place here. And we're going to flip this one, trim the top of this. Like a pro without cutting your finger. Don't jinx me now. <laughs> I said without cutting your finger. <laughs> Man, I burned that before the trip. And I always thought cutting your finger is like the worst part on being a cook. Anything, anytime that you're messing with citrus, it's such a pain. But who knew? The top of the hand, hands down, way worse. And that's just healing up. 
All right. And I like to flip that part so you have a flat side on top, press it down some, makes it a little bit more even. And now we're going to frost the entire cake. Our buddy Brad from Chili's and Smoke just joined. What's up, buddy? Evan said, asked if you've ever worked in a bakery. He said he used to and had to frost all the cookies and said it was a ton of hard work. Really? <laughs> it is. I'll tell you what, you have to be dedicated when you're messing with cookies. Um, we have a local bakery here, Sugar Island, and I absolutely love her. The owner, Sam, is incredible. Her mom, Tannis, works there. And all the work that they put into creating all of these dishes on a daily basis, it's, it's a lot. Brad says, wish I was Joe. I want that cake. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't mind if you wanted to fly out here. Joe is getting surgery in a couple of weeks, and I'm going to need a cameraman. So that I would be I still get amazing. a piece of cake, though. Oh, you'll get a piece of cake. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brad, I don't blame you. This is probably right up there and definitely one of my top favorites. Yeah, it's this frosting that is just so good. See, now for me, you could just skip that frosting and just put more chocolate in the middle. But, you know, I'm not against that part. See, and that's <laughs> why I can't give you a piece now. You just talked yourself right out of the piece. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky for me, you guys, Danielle like likes to sleep. So I'll just get up in the middle of the night and eat chocolate yeah. cake. <laughs> She wouldn't get up out of bed to stop me. <laughs> no, it'd have to be something more serious, like something potato related. Even then, you'd just want it brought to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. Got a question. What kind of cake is that? This is German chocolate cake. So the chocolate cake itself is kind of my go-to um, master recipe if you want to say i use this rest this chocolate cake for pretty much any kind of chocolate cake that you see on my website um, on instagram so like the cannoli cake everything like that this is the master recipe chocolate cake the frosting is a chocolate buttercream frosting and then we made a German chocolate, or German, I don't know what you would call it, the pecan coconut frosting, which is classic for German chocolate cake. Um, we made that as well to go in between the layers and to go on top. And you can do this in different orders on how you want to frost. I like to do it this way just because it gets everything set and then I can just top the rest with that because again, to me, that's the focal point. I mean, the cake is delicious, obviously, but the frosting is the money part. Except for Joe. He just wants all the chocolate. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to scrape it off or anything, but you know. <laughs> if it it'd was just a, all chocolate, it would be okay. <laughs> it'd be all right if you... Uh, scraped it off. Just scraped it off on my plate. Yeah. yeah. That's why it works out so good. We're like a team. You know? Yeah. It does work out well. <laughs> yeah, and funny enough, like, if you, like, my favorite desserts are typically not something chocolate. I like, I love vanilla. I love fresh fruit flavors, pastries. <sighs> love me some pastries. But out of cakes, this is, yeah, this and probably hummingbird cake. Evan asked, uh, did you start Salty Cooker during COVID? No, um, I started about three years prior to that. Yeah, you've uh, been at it a while. Yeah, it started off as kind of just, uh, honestly, like a whatever page. Like my girlfriend's talked to me. Oh, my girlfriends talked me into doing it. I was just kind of feeling lost, like we moved, I quit. I had been working three jobs um, and Joe's business was doing well. So he's like, I wanna to move to the beach. So we moved from Raleigh to Topsail Beach and I left all my friends, everything I was doing. So it's just like, oh, what do I do now? Made some friends, um, 
same friends that we have now that the reason that we moved back to this area was for them. Well, because we wanted to be close to them. But uh, yeah, they one day were sitting down at lunch having a bottle of you know wine and eating and I was just like, man, this is so amazing. And my girlfriend Brittany talked me into, why don't you get on Instagram and just start sharing your recipes? Like, who gives a crap about my recipes? That doesn't matter, <laughs> you know? There's so many talented people on here. Like, why would anybody care about what I have to offer? So they talked me into it. I think it took another bottle of wine to talk me into it, but I did it. And it just kind of went from there. Um, I started seeing some potential of turning it into a business. And Joe, oh, Joe has the entrepreneur mind. He's always, you know, you should do this, you should do this, check this out. And yeah, so it just, it kind of grew from there. And it was funny this last week at the retreat, hearing everybody's stories. The first day um, we sat down, Chef Tramel had an amazing uh, dinner all set up for us. And we were going around the table and just kind of introducing ourselves. And I just started to panic, like sweating and of you know when that moment starts it's like best to just hurry up and get over with well the whole table needed to go around before it came to me and i was in a full sweat like what am i doing here these people are amazing you know it's like the same people that when i first joined those are the people that i'm sitting down next to i was just like this is just so cool but like very ah uh, like you know that ah uh, moment so it was yeah really cool just Carlos asks, do you speak other languages? Yes, she does. She speaks Italian. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of Italian. I do. I have been practicing Italian for like eight years now. And I pretty much know how to ask for my shoe size and my dress size because over there it's the same size. So it makes that easy. I know how to ask for help, the train station, and where's the bathroom. And I'm crushing it. <laughs> <laughs> Street last said less of the guy talking please <laughs> <laughs> you know if you post a comment I'm gonna read it so the more comments you post the more I'm gonna read you know what I say that every day <laughs> <laughs> less of you talking Joe you know I cut this on a weird angle let me try Evil to get Beamer says man that looks delicious thank you let's go ahead and show you guys the pretty shot hopefully I cut this on a good angle. There we go. But you can see that delicious inside. Let me go ahead and cut another piece because the first piece always turns out a little bit wonky. That's why I always get the first piece. Yeah. Mantis said, this lady doesn't miss. Keep on. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, this is, I'm not going to lie, that shit's dangerous right there. <laughs> <laughs> you are not stopping at one piece. This is <sighs> so good. You know, I've been detoxing all week. I think I'm good. Yeah, I just in time. Good. I think I think it's time to like crush this because look at that. Look at all that goodness. You have chocolate buttercream frosting, uh, caramel flavor, pecan, coconut. I don't know the German chocolate cake frosting. That's what I always call it. And the chocolate cake itself is very rich. It's really similar to a. Um, just had it in my head. It's the really moist cake. Doesn't matter. It's really good. <laughs> Can't think of it. Um, super easy to make. This is perfect to make in advance. I wouldn't recommend to make it probably no more than two days in advance if you're going to be making it for a special event. This is going to, depending on how big of a piece that you're going to eat, it can feed up to, you know, 12, 16 people. Um, you can also make cupcakes out of this recipe. If you are going to do cupcakes, one option that you could do is core out the inside and put one of the fillings on the inside 
and then put the other one on top of it or just layer it. You could do chocolate on top and then top it with the German frosting that we keep talking about that's not actually, you know, from Germany. <laughs> but super easy, super delicious. And again, you can comment below recipe and it's going to go ahead and send you the um, link to the website so you can see the full recipe there. And any questions you guys can always let me know. We will be on next Thursday, I believe. So probably right around 7 p.m. to make it a little bit better for everyone. And the week after that is when we're going to be doing the smoked pulled pork butts right in time for Memorial Day. So as always, anytime you guys have any recommendations, what you'd like to see made live, go ahead and send me a message because next week is open. So yeah, let's see what you guys want to make. All right, comments. Uh, Evil Beamer says, thanks so much for the recipes. They're awesome. Thank you. And just checking to see if we have any other questions. Um, hey, someone says, thanks for the recipes. Appreciate Joe's effort. Thank you. Thank you. Working hard over here. Yeah. And I never feed them. Got a few that say yum. <laughs> That's what he always says. Quite a few commenting they want the recipe. So Danielle will follow up with you guys afterwards and send it to you. And uh, someone commented confetti cake. That is awesome that you said that. That is actually on my list to make. I'm hoping to have time to make it this Saturday. I have been working on a recipe for a while. I think this is going to be the final test. And... Fingers crossed. I'm so excited. I'm happy that you that you asked for that one because I'm curious how well this is going to do. So, yeah, hopefully that one will be good and that'll be out next week then. Awesome. That was it. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us. And you can always head over to thesaltycooker.com. I have all the recipes on there as well. There's hundreds and hundreds and they're all free. You can sign up for the newsletter too to um, receive an email every other week on the new recipes that are coming out. And we'll see you next Thursday. Someone said, said hey, peanut butter lover. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you guys. That is true. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thank you.